Come on, come on, where's the hammer? Where's the hammer? Hey, it's Steve. Welcome back to my channel. Today we'll take a look at the Quest VR version of the game, Zombieland Headshot Fever. I'll give you a brief rundown of the game, then we'll jump straight into some gameplay footage. And finally, finish with my own thoughts and my buy or don't buy recommendation. So make sure you stick around to the end. Okay, done. Now let's get in there. Zombieland VR Headshot Fever is a fast-paced light gun game brought into the 21st century. Developed by XR Games and published by Sony, the game is an arcade-styled adaptation from the movie where all main characters are present in this game too. I managed to pick up my digital copy on sale for roughly 28 Aussie buckaroonies, and from what I can tell, it appears to only support Oculus Quest and Quest 2 headsets on the Oculus platform, so unfortunately Rift users are left out. The game was released earlier in the year in late March and has had enough time to gain over 300 Oculus user reviews. 70% of them rate it 5 out of 5, 19 rate it 4 out of 5, so you could say 9 out of 10 people who left those reviews enjoyed the game. So another good reason to give it a try. From the moment I played the first level in the game, I was instantly reminded that this is essentially an arcade light gun game made for VR. If you've ever played Time Crisis or House of the Dead in the arcades, you'll love this game. The main difference I've noticed is that in the levels I've played so far, there's no timer countdown, but rather you complete timed speedruns instead. Your speedrun times are publicly listed on an online leaderboard, and I think this is the bare minimum of what you need to call your game an online multiplayer game. But do note that this game is listed as a single player game. To help you speed through hordes of zombies, you can activate bullet time by simply double tapping your trigger when taking headshots. The more zombies you kill in this way and string together, the slower time gets. Interesting fact, bullet time was first introduced in gameplay through the game Max Payne, which was released 20 years ago to date. Let's talk aiming now. To play the game, you need some basic level of gun proficiency. Luckily, the game provides enough modifiers, also known as perks, to apply that give you an advantage with your weapons and the gameplay itself to assist you if you aren't that talented. I like that you can place the supporting controller beneath your aiming hand to steady your aim, and in the game, this actually locks the hand in place as you'd expect to see your hands do in real life. As for movement in the game, it's very similar to your typical arcade light gun style games where you only proceed once an area is clear. It's basically a series of shooting galleries you proceed through that make up each game level. I like this movement approach as it made me think less about the buttons and focus more on the fun stuff, shooting zombies. Most importantly, I didn't feel disoriented while standing or nauseous after hour long gameplay. There's a nice selection of weapons to choose from in the game. To start with, you begin with your primary weapon, the 1911 handgun, which has infinite ammo. As you proceed through each level, you unlock more interesting weapons like shotguns, SMGs and more. These are your secondary weapons and their ammo can run out so you need to use them wisely. All weapons can be upgraded back at your base by talking to your crew member, Tallahassee, over by the table. Upgrades are paid for with toilet paper credits. Yes, good old TP. A luxury in post-apocalyptic worlds which you earn when you play levels and kill zombies. This is especially true if you're living in Australia during the pandemic times. I didn't quite like the reload system since it reduced the realism somewhat. To reload, you pull back on the thumb trigger on the controller holding your gun and then drop the gun grip down towards your belt where an ammo clip is waiting suspended in midair. In other games I've played, I find using your supporting hand to grab a clip from your belt and manually loading it in felt much better, but I understand the XR game devs opted for this simpler arcade style approach. I'm pretty sure arcade light gun games made you shoot off screen to reload, so this design choice seems more about making the arcade experience simple and fluid. While I think the movement system is convenient, I do think it detracts from this being a more immersive experience. I noticed several times ducking and sidestepping had little effect against projectiles enemies were throwing at me. The visuals I thought were fantastic for a game powered solely by the Quest 2 Snapdragon chip. There was a fair bit of scintillation or unaliased shimmering on edges as well as the use of super low budget textures but plenty of detail and gory effects on the zombies themselves. I didn't experience any latency or lag when aiming or shooting. 
The devs added plenty of world objects to make the environments feel believable, and true to what you'd expect to see in, say, a junkyard, for example. Impressively, after this game's launch, the devs continued to work hard on improving the game by releasing a considerable free update only six weeks after its initial launch. They released the Kingpin update, which brought improved graphics, updates specific to the Quest 2 headset, two new remixed levels, and one completely new level, all three of which I'm yet to try out. The gameplay mechanics are smooth and responsive. Aiming feels quite natural and accurate. I wasn't a huge fan of the reload methods and at time lost track of remaining ammo during frantic moments in the game. Also, the movement method worked out well in the end, so I'm neutral on that. I would have loved to have seen a co-op game mode where you could go back to back with a friend fighting hordes of zombies, but I guess I'll have to wait until after the fall is released or play Propagation VR. The game is well made and polished, plenty of positive reviews, I've left each session with a positive feeling and with the casual nature of the gameplay won't have any issue going back for more in the future. From what I can see, the game developers have been quite actively listening to its user feedback and acting on their suggestions through their recent updates. I'm throwing a link down below to the official Zombieland VR Discord group where you can get in contact with other players and the XR game devs. Would I recommend you buy or don't buy? Definitely buy. I say that not only on the good final thoughts I've mentioned, but also because I'm a fan of having standalone arcade hits on tap ready to play on my Quest VR headset anytime or anywhere. Let me know in the comments below if there's a particular game you'd like me to review. I hope this review was useful to you. If it was, feel free to leave me a like and I'll see you in my next video.